Hi, Kanika. Can you hear me? Uh, hello, sir. Okay, fine. Anika, you hear me? Anika, are you on, are you on mute? Are you talking on mute? Hello. Yeah, can you hear me and see me both well? Is yes, it fine? Yes, yes sir. you are audible. Okay, I okay. Can see you as well. yeah. Nice. Okay. okay, let us wait for people to join in. Thank you. Yes.
Hi, good afternoon everyone. This is Muhammad Tanvir Akram, your speaker for today's uh, webinar on Instructional Design course. Kanika, are we uh, waiting for more people? Or we are good to go? Uh, we, have, uh, we can just wait for five to 10 minutes. More. We can wait for at least five, seven minutes. Uh, if you want, you want to start with introduction or something, you can start with it if you want. Sure, sure. So I will just give uh, five more minutes uh, for people to join in. Yeah, I can see people uh, joining in. So that's right. Yes, yes. Uh, if you can just share your screen uh, so you can use it as well as host. Hello once again, uh, this is Mohammed Tanvir. Uh, I'm an instructional design uh, coach. Uh, I'm working in Andrea Arvin. Uh, just to give uh, people to join, just to give moments of time so people can join in. Uh, uh, let me uh, set ground rules. Uh, we are uh, taking this webinar to just introduce uh, how the instructional design course will be helpful You know, in across the uh, organizations wherever you are working in or uh, across the fields where you are uh, going to implement in some instructional design or uh, you are taking up a career as a you know e-learning e expert or instructional design expert or learning experience designer so this is you know uh, just a crux of it just to set the ground rules if you have anything to ask uh, as a questions or if you have any doubts in mind please feel free to type in and just try to raise hand and i will we'll be accommodating those questions uh, exactly at 145 and uh, i'll be the i'll be your host for entire uh, one hour so please bear with me and put forward all your questions so let us wait a couple of more minutes just two more minutes for people to join in then we can start uh, relaying the entire you know one hour webinar thank you so much for joining early thank you so much beyond time also Nika, are you able to see my screen? 
but it's it's visible. Your screen is visible. Okay, great. Thank you so much for joining early. Thank you so much for joining, and we have given five more minutes to people join in. And yes, we here uh, we can start our journey of instructional design course. And um, what is basically instructional design? So people may be thinking that you know because of new COVID uh, you know situation which started from last year, and now it is you know growing uh, uh, to an uncontrolled extent in various parts of the world. So e-learning world, uh, the virtual uh, world where e learning and development has been uh, come to a very good boom and very good success. And people are opting more towards and learning and development method methodologies. They are trying to see what is learner's theories. They are trying to see what is instructional design theories. They are trying to explore what are, what are the tools we need in terms of e-learning. Now, where do we start? where all the structure will come in how do we process the knowledge now how do we convert the existing material of e-learning existing uh, pdf materials to e-learning and there's a chaos i hope you know all of you are uh, safe please stay at home uh, please maintain some distance please wear mask please use uh, very good hand sanitizers and please keep uh, please keep your family also safe so let me start and give you a structure on instructional design course so what is instructional design all about? Instructional design all about is cutting down the instructor from the course and making the course very highly interactive, informative, and engaging to a learner wherein a transfer of knowledge can happen. A transfer of knowledge can happen maybe in terms of knowledge, maybe in terms of skills, maybe in terms of increasing the ability. So this is how uh, the instructional design methodologies came in, wherein they are adopting a different medium of instruction for different medium of courses. Okay, so today uh, I'll be taking you through, you know, what are those five key element areas, which is, you know, concept and opportunities in instructional design. What is the concept of instructional design? The concept of instructional designs is, as uh, we see, instructional design started way back in 1955, uh, post World War II, wherein we needed a quick adaptation and revolution in terms of le learning, where modernization and development of standards were happening, and we needed workforce. And there are three different psychologists who came in and who contributed in various terms of, you know, uh, teaching, uh, art of the art of uh, science of teaching and art of learning, which was created by B.F. Skinner and criterion reference model, creating objectives for, for any kind of you know educational topics. Then it has moved on. Then we added you know Bloom's taxonomy. Then there are other you know uh, instruction design medium came in. So instruction design as a concept is helping a small a, a helping a learner to understand what he's supposed to do think that you know you are teaching somebody a bicycle your kid or somebody who don't know bicycle he's a learner so how are you going to teach the way you have learned in your childhood the way you have experienced bringing that learning experience and teaching that bicycle in a medium that he can be effectively pedaled let us bring it to schools or grades wherein you know grade one to grade eight why we need instructional medium wherein teachers are present but still they're adapting their lesson plan into instructional medium why they want to understand various types of learners right there are different types of learner i am i myself i'm experiential learner uh, there are you know other learners who comes with visual uh, other learners who comes with you know listening the other learners come with you know kinesthetic they with other learners there are seven to eight different kind of learners so understanding the learner giving the proper instructions and making them aware making them aware of the concepts the knowledge the skill or the ability which they are going to learn is a concept of instructional design. We are giving a, we are creating a medium of instruction so that we can give knowledge to that person. Okay, so with this introduction on instructional design, so a few of the people will be very curious to know that you know what is instructional design. So just thought I thought of giving a, a simple, a crux, you know, simple instruction uh, example or introduction to instructional design, and let me introduce myself. 
Uh, I am Muhammad Tanvir Akram. I have around 16 years of experience uh, totally into graphic design, learning experience design, instructional design, e-learning specialist. I have worked with IT, ITS, healthcare, aviation, and automobile industry. I am also providing consulting to various services across learning and development. I have worked uh, I am. I have worked. I am also working as e-learning developer. I'm also working as the consultant for you know learning and development for various organization. Wherein uh, we also do, I also work for the institutions and education institution, edtech companies for you know bringing up the value addition in terms of learning. So this is what you know we supposed to do when we get into instructional design. What is that is value proposition in terms of each and everything what we do. Okay. Now, instructional design as a future. Okay. So as I said, uh, see, I we have been working with the team with as an individual contributor, as a global team, as a specialist from 2010 uh, in these roles in terms of e-learning. But e-learning got picked up suddenly in 2015. So then it all started with cost cutting, the cost optimization. The cost optimization reached to a certain extent wherein the sales team earlier used to get revenue from the sales which they are supposed to do. But now entire sales team of healthcare industry, they get their incentives by acquiring more and more knowledge, by certifying themselves and passing more and more knowledge. So that means the more and more industries looking towards cost cutting and increasing the learning capability inside their organization. These are healthcare, these are IT, these are you know IT enabled services, these are aviation, these are automotive industry, these are you know all kind of industries. They want to increase the learning and they, they want to increase the knowledge capability and build ability and skill for most of the people. So when these opportunities came up, when these things were going up and these things are picked up by uh, many of the organization as a strategy, then what happens is they look for the people who are creating e-learnings, who are creating storyboards, who are looking into instructional design as a strategy that how do we reach out to different levels, different, you know, uh, types of uh, employees in the organization. That means you will have higher vacancies. When you have higher vacancies, then what happens is your uh, the when the value for that job role goes up, then you will have higher salaries. And every year from 2015 to till 2019, that was a 10% of a growth. But from 2019 to till now, it is exponential. 78% of the growth is on towards only e-learning, wherein everybody is custom, cutting costs on instructor led training, wherein they used to call instructor, they used to fly from different geographical location to other geographical location, wherein they have to take sessions for uh, the students. But now it has ILTs, we used to call instructor led training that is converted to virtual instructor led training and soon from last year to this year there is 25 percent of virtual instructor led training converted into e-learning self-paced learning web-based learning scenario based learning role play based learning sop based learning process based learning functionality based learning product based learning simulation based learning various different kinds of learning you know uh, came into picture so that is that is our future is going to be. There are people who are adapting. There are people who are localizing the existing content. So that is also means from past five, 10 years, they might have the PPTs in terms of instructor-led training. So that they are converting e-learning. That is another, another, uh, another gamut of work which e-learning developers are doing. Okay. So think uh, you can say, Tanvir, uh, you're saying all this kind of learning that I might be in a different stage of my career. I might have five years experience. Somebody might have 10 years of experience. Somebody might have, you know, worked in a similar lines, but not called as an instructional designer. Somebody is, you know, some somebody was, you know, just three years fresher because I have been training. I have been hearing this from various people that how do I fit into this job? I am working in IT. How I can become an instructional designer? I worked in. An, I worked as a teacher. How do I convert that experience and call myself as an instructional designer? So these are the roles uh, which instructional design offers. Uh, if knowingly, unknowingly, many teachers 
trainers, uh, process facilitators, technical training experts, subject matter expert who are predominantly facing audience in terms of giving knowledge, building ability, uplifting their you know value, finding up the gap, and you know for, uh, finding the gap, brainstorming with the learner, and making them very effective in their job roles. These guys they will perfectly fit into all these roles, but. What about those people who are managing these people? So those people can become managers, learning and development project manager, instructional designer and developer, curriculum specialist or coordinator for educational tech companies, director of learning strategies, wherein we can become a center of learning, center, we can you know stay for center of excellence and educational consultant, uh, wherein we go, we see we how we see the syllabus, we'll see which syllabus is good for your colleges like ICSC, CBSC, and what is the syllabus for J2E and you know different and computer exam educational consultant can be also a consultant wherein we implement various technologies in terms of sap in terms of uh, you know other other uh, capabilities when we are building professor in instructional design when professor in instructional design comes in is more over more towards how do you customize instructional design theories as per learner request or, or as per end results of the training and i i see there are some charts coming in i'm going to address this uh, uh, address those charts as i as i said at exactly at 145 uh, and i'm going to cover those uh, then uh, moving to training and development spe specialists so a few of the, uh, the very good uh, folks whom i met they work like 10 years straight ahead managing entire entire training team and some people they will say how do i call myself as an instructional designer the way you prepare your your slide deck and the way you give the flow the way you give the architecture for any of the course the way you add the examples wherein you engage interact with your audience the same things if you convert into electronic medium of learning you are an instructional designer it is as simple as that okay people also come from you know corporate training wherein uh, they used to train on you know personality development they used to train on various certification courses they'll come and say i have been a trainer can i be an instruction designer yes oh yes you can be i have been a principal can i be an instruction designer yes you can be i have been a, a center of excellence learning director can i add instruction design certification yes that will add value for you so there are all across the industries the learning has taken a very good curve and it is right time for all of us to get started okay so henry harvin as an institution it started in 2013 in in san francisco california and uh, we have delivered on 30 uh, we have delivered uh, instructor led training towards the client base on 30000 learners and also delivered self training self paced uh, training to a client base around 200,000 learners. You can see the difference between ILT and you know, e-learnings here itself. And we are, we are providing 80 plus courses in India and across the globe. And we have 150 plus operators. So I know it is, you might have seen all this information in, uh, uh, on the website but again as a interest as a curiosity i would like to push you and see what is in it for me if i take this as a e-learning right so as, a, as i take it as an instruction designer what is in it for me before going to course structure let me see some of the charts which is coming in okay Okay, so Ankur Mehrotra is asking my number for clearing the doubts. S sure, uh, our face, our host will be you know, sharing the number with you. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, fine. Let me go and show you what is that you get in the course. Uh, do I get the complete end-to-end? There will be a lot of questions which is coming in as a participant. You'll be thinking, uh, will I be a you know will I be an intermediate intermediate uh, level expert? Uh, will, I, will I become an intermediate level expert of instructional design? Will I take up everything whatever you know people are saying? Uh, will I take up? Will I understand the terminologies? What is FG, FGs? What is you know PGs? What is participant guide? What is facilitator guide? You know what is what are the different type of LMS? Will I learn the tools? Will I learn in you know, articulate so line? Will I learn Adobe Captivate, will I learn Adobe Illustrator, will I learn Adobe Photoshop. So 
and people you might have you know seen some of the job description also before getting into this webinar that you know you might have asked that um, uh, tanveer uh, people are asking uh, instruction designer should be having article soil and also in as a skill set adobe captivate also as a skill set and having learning management system uh, experience also as a skill set how should we go about this because we cannot have all the things at one umbrella right as a one person because different things are having different different energies so yes let me go through this course structure and clear uh, uh, your doubts and uh, here uh, as a course structure i have added you know, five very niche things which will help you in understanding why instructional design is needed if why instructional design is needed that what are the things you should have and what are the things you can expect in our courses so e learning uh, as a business value creation why e learning is becoming more and more popular why it is a business value creation for most of the industries and are you can say all of the industries because when i when we were taking this training i have seen people coming from shipping industry a captain a captain of ship he has come and he has been you know spent like 30 to 35 years in 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 in, in maneuvering the biggest cargo ships and he has joined the course and we have seen a veteran ex army guy uh, he is he was from aviation he was having 25 years of experience and he joined to the course why and there are principal of one of the institution she has joined to the course and there are various different sorts of life there is learning advisor from one of the very good company which i can't take the name from it so our facilitated facilitators can help you out uh, with those names so these people are jo joining this course with different mediums why because you know they are trying to okay they are trying to you know bring up a difference uh, for rushikesh if you can switch off your camera that will be uh, great yeah thank you so much okay so they are coming up with you know different value creation in terms of for this for their business means the organizations are seeing a value in terms of business value creation for them so what is that value which we are trying to see if a let me tell you one of the industry example then you know putting it on you know slide deck what is reading it for you so if a new joiner a entry level person joins into an organization and he starts uh, looking at for you know picking up himself and start producing some of the tangible results which will benefit the company in terms of revenue means if he works the company productivity uh, rate will go high then uh, as soon as he gets into a productivity level that time is in most of the industries are they are spending 4 to 4 to 6 months on the training and certification as soon as e learning came in that 4 to 6 months of e learning and certification reduced to just 3 to 4 weeks wherein instructor led training unavailability of instructor instructor has to fly and there are some course corrections wherein there is some side barging all shadowing things got removed and completely simulation based role role based process based sop based e learnings as a combination came in and people start learning at the next month itself they started performing it's a business value creation for each of the industry for a school kid if a kid is coming in and if he is picking up the fast track learning and he is performing he is passing most of the exams then it is great for the institution wherein they are scoring high and also we are giving it as a service for the generations who are whose understanding we are beautifying it whose value creation is much much smarter than the uh, than the other earlier generations wherein they can contribute very well to the uh, society which is upcoming so e learning as a business value creation is picking up very smartly and wherein people are looking at as a cost cutting factor that's why learning and development earlier it was there only for 2 to 3 months of the you know entry level joining after it was vanishing but now learning and developing is there learning and development department will be there from your day of joining to the till the day of your leaving the organization in terms of knowledge transfer as a backup in terms of knowledge transfer as for productivity also reinforcement of the knowledge so one of the factor is people you know they understand 
they 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 perform but sometimes because of various socio human factors people performance will go down various systematic factor people performance will go down various mood swings happen people performance will go down so that time what we do reinforcement of knowledge we do okay also uh, you can you can ask tanvir uh, you know where do i start what do is that you are going to teach i told you business value creation yeah it is good for organization what is that i learn you will learn how do you how to do a tna training need analysis in a greater detail in a greater detail wherein you are you will have a foundational skill a foundational training of 2 to 3 days wherein you will understand that why i need to do training need analysis so let me cover in a very simplistic way where you can you know carry out this as a knowledge you know training need analysis is done for only to add value to organization build new skill for your organization and bridge gap in the organization or the same thing in the schools in the institutions in any kind of performance sectors right training need analysis is done that why do we require training some of you can you know ask for an example so let me give you one simple example so let me take uh, india is uh, was a home for call centers and also is a home for call centers so let me take some example so one of the team a is performing is taking seven calls uh, another team a uh, agent is taking seven calls per day the second team b that team agent is taking 15 calls a day so there is a gap of 7 and 15 how much 3 plus 5 8 he is performing he is out performing he is still performing but the gap then after seeing this the organization sets a goal that everybody has to perform has to take 10 calls a day then the seven guy has to reach 10 but the 15 guy can continuously perform but sometimes what happens is the 15 guy come down to 12 also based on his availability might be his stretching might be his you know socio human factor might be that you know he might have got you know extended conversation with the client so now how are you bridging a gap a guy who is performing seven calls a day to 10 calls so that is where training need analysis i go i sit with the out performer i understand that what different he is doing i will try to see that you know is he adding value to his knowledge or is he having some kind of his own initiative or is he picking up the calls which will you know uh, go ahead faster and he is parking the calls or which is or he is what kind of tone what kind of uh, strategy he is using for different different solutions as a training need analysis so we discuss into the root levels of that why do we require training when it is what is the organization or objective organization objective is to reach 10 so when we reach 10 what is the skill is needed when skill is needed then how are we evaluating that skill in terms of the current organization then once skills are then then once we evaluate that this is a right skill we need to have or this is the wrong skill that somebody else is out performing by using you know out of sop so we need to evaluate so how are we evaluating what kind of evaluation model or theory we are using are we using kirk practice you know evaluation model so when you are identifying the skills how are we identifying with the level 1 level 2 level 3 when we are identifying the course so how, when we identify the course how are we delivering are we delivering as a change management are we delivering as a process management are we delivering as a operations management are we delivering as in you know, a one on one coaching are we delivering as one to many coaching so these are the gaps these are the analysis which we do in terms of training need analysis and this will be covered much much before before we you know come to training need analysis and then once we meet this you know skill gap then we'll start go ahead and you know see that you know are we good to create this as a program are we good to create only as a module are we good to create it as a micro learning are we good to create create it as a capsule learning are we good to create only a a, a printable sheet of quick reference guide wherein they can see one two three best five step to reach you know 10 calls per day target so training need analysis will help you to create e learning will help you to create different types of e learning will help you to create micro learning will help you to create quick reference guides as well
okay then the next thing is uh, the the training need analysis i have said then training gap analysis so this is one of the factor which we uh, see in most of the time in the organization wherein we have new blood coming in we have tenured employees so that time what we need to do is uh, where are we you know how are we combining these employees and producing a very good productivity and also uh, the similar example we always update our technologies we always you know go from one server to another server another server to another vendor from another vendor to another data center that means we are evolving evolution is you know happening across the organization when evolution is happening across the organization then what happens is there will be a gap earlier last year we have trained uh, people on you know server 1 so now we have to train people on updated server 1.1 There is a gap. So, how are you identifying that gap, right? So, when we are identifying that gap, what are the methodologies we will follow? So, when we identify that gap, are we, you know, recruiting some people who can, you know, use this? I don't need to, you know, go for training gap analysis. These people will be good for, you know, taking care of this. So, this is one kind of, you know, product update. Again, role update. Some people get promoted from team member to team leader, team leader to senior uh, leadership. Uh, team assistant manager manager senior manager so how are we building those uh, you know uh, the learning uh, this that skill gap or the knowledge gap so that also comes in training gap analysis where we will see that you know uh, how are we you know building this knowledge in terms of uh, uh, in terms of in terms of making these roles to perform better okay so So these are the things which is extensively you know, discussed in terms of before starting even instructional design because whenever subject matter comes to you in a realistic world or a stakeholder comes to you in a realistic world he will ask you that you know i would like to create a training you should not be taking the ppt and jump and say that okay let me create a let me apply instructional design model let me you know do this okay let me deliver it in articulate storyline and put it on lms your job is done no that is what a developer does instructional designer things in a 360 degree of need analysis and gap analysis the business value you are going to which this training is going to create for any organization okay then once he does all these things the next thing is target audience analysis what kind of audience i have am i training leadership people am i training uh, the adil adil um, uh, associates am i training the developers am i am i training the testers am i tra- who if i if you create e learning or if you create a self paced learning and uh, when you roll it out for entire audience of organization then what happens the learning curve of the entire organization will become average it will fail because some part of the training is not relevant to the some part of functional group some part of the training is much relevant to the some functional group but you know end and start may not be relevant right so we need to analyze our target audience if i am training on finance team so i should create a customized course for finance team and train them if i am training people on hr i need to Places they are coming in, uh, which uh, you know, what kind of cultural values they have, uh, what is uh, uh, which language they speak, you know, what kind of examples they like as terms of training. So these are the things as a target audience we need to think. So as a target audience analysis, there are various things will coming duration of the training. people will come and say that you know there are 150 slides and these slides will come up and what is the duration of the training am i having the luxury of taking that one six slides in like 3 uh, to 4 hours no i cannot so the duration is also matters in terms of target audience analysis understanding the demographic understanding the interest understanding the environment what kind of environment are they having proper uh internet connections are they having proper browsers to view our courses are they having flash because flash is now outdated and it is not there on the chrome most of the adobe captivate articulate storyline courses coming up then they are you know seeing to revamp so we have to check in terms of everything are they having place where they can take this training are they having devices okay and 
all this combined together is target audience analysis and i will be discussing and we as a henry harman will be discussing a much much broader discussion in terms of target audience analysis i'm sorry that i'm cutting down you know you know few of the topics here because it i i love to discuss on you know all these factors like try training uh, need analysis target audience uh, you know uh, training gap analysis target audience because these are the core these things will deliver a focused training which create a business value for anybody whom you are creating until unless until unless you don't understand our training need analysis and our training gap analysis and target audience analysis then for whom are you creating a training it is like you know, uh, having a fire drill uh, for entire organization there will be people who are brave enough they will stand in front they will go they will exercise they will learn but there will be few people you know they are uh, you know they feel themselves you know very isolated there will be some you know introvert people there will be some extrovert people there will be different kind of learners they will be always sitting at the last there will be some people they will not even come out of the office and they learn what is that you know fire extinguisher learning a fire extinguisher or you know having that demo uh, which is for any you might have seen it but will that be learned by everybody no why because it's a mass training it is not learning spinning it is coaching right so as a target audience analysis we need to analyze different different audience and based on that we need to customize our training we need to group our training we need to break our training into module 1 module 2 module 3 module 4 and module 5 so like that after understanding that audience then only we can do what if you are training people on israel middle east and you have to completely change this you know think about this webinar if i am training this if i am delivering this for israel where in hebrew language is written and spoken and middle east when arabic language is written and spoken there if i am doing this training entire thing all the letters and everything should be arabic or hebrew it should be from right to left isn't it if i did not do right to left what happens people will you know lose the touch at least if i have a hebrew word or hebrew titles and what happens it creates an interest what did i do i touched that target audience i created that interest i created that environment i said this is the need for you so that is how we need to you know pick up and you know we start uh, you know analyzing target audience analysis okay then instructional design methodology there are various methodologies you might have you know before joining to this webinar you might have seen uh, uh, uh various methodologies coming in like adi sam blooms gagnis nine events dick and gary model and lot of stuff i'll tell you simple input and you know output matrix you know start the e learning have a discussion with subject matter expert close down on the scope once you close down on the scope then produce a prototype of a storyboard prototype of your user interface of e learning where in user interface is having how the design should look like where the buttons should come user experience is building the buttons and how the experience should come how the navigation should go then once you build a prototype of storyboard uh, prototype of user interface and user experience then you will start uh, you know applying instructional design methodologies uh then you will also find a way that you know what kind of medium are we delivering are we delivering as a video are we delivering it as a e learning plus video are we delivering as a blended learning where in e learning video try me test me all those things will come then once you add this as a e learning development how are you reviewing it what is beta stage what is alpha stage what is golden user life what is you know lms consideration what is com why is com is used then uh, once you know up, upload it to a uh, upload it on upload it on lms or web are you delivered directly to their them they are uploading it then how are you doing user acceptance test on the e learning so once you do user acceptance test on the e learning then how are you evaluating that is your e learning is effective if your e learning is effective then it is good to go then you need to put a expiry date for that e learning because you know it might not be effective after 5 years months if it is not effective what are the ways you are planning to do a knowledge uh, you know retraining or reinforcement of the knowledge or you are trying to create one on one sessions or you are trying to give them a quick reference material or you are trying to give them a snippet of the video how are you teaching how are you handling handling your audience and how are you certifying them it is simple instructional design methodology at most of the time people are 
I because I gives you the complete project management gamut of it. And also, let me bust a myth. You can combine ID, you can combine Bloom, you can combine Kate Patrick, then you can make a course. You can combine the instructional design methodologies and you can make a courses. It is not that you know you need to follow only one methodology and you start delivering it. Okay, remember instructional design methodology is to design a various levels of courses there can be there can be a course on change management there can be a course on you know delivering values like uh, you know diversity equity and inclusion there might be a course of code of conduct there might be a course on prevention of sexual harassment all the instruction methodologies does not fit to all of this if only few of them will fit so please join to this course and we will be teaching you that you know what kind of instructional medium will teach to each of these categories okay last but not least uh, i would like to cover e-learning as a project management now people are seeing a mass uh, conversion of e-learning towards adaptation towards global you know project so then what's happening is earlier we had agile project manager <laughs> various project managers coming in with you know various project management methodologies so now we are seeing e-learning as a project manager learning advisor as a project manager so i myself worked as a project manager onshore offshore i was worked in you know saudi arabia bahrain uh, Dubai, uh, across you know, different, different countries. I worked in client side as a project manager. So, it's, so in 2015, 16, and 17, uh, many of the places we have executed. So now after 2019, after 2020 and 2021 now, so e-learning is a project manager coming up. So there we need to combine uh, the different different uh, teams like you know we have instructional designers we have graphic designers we have admins who are you know managing the lms we have user experience designers who are coders programmers we have vendors sometime wherein if we don't have a team we outsource it to vendor and as a global project manager what we need to do we have to communicate and we see how much of e how much of the training can be converted to e-learning how much savings can be shown right the project manager is not only that you know okay one project comes he will manage and he will deliver he'll upload it to lms no the spectrum of instructional design to a grown to an unimaginable level because every day when i get a call from people uh, various part of the world i get a call and this is then we what is this all about is it yeah this is what it is this is how it can be managed e-learning as a project manager is also you know uh, uh, coming out as a best case study for you know most of the organization and they are also also adapting to ways of you know agile project management also accelerated learnings for uh, the uh, most of the trainings okay so let us go and see uh, that you know what are the uh, skill set required uh, as a you know e-learning for e-learning project it is just id knowledge and how best you can collaborate with the team and you need to have leadership skills wherein you can you can exactly pull up uh, a clear expectation from subject matter expert and put evaluation matrix in terms of measurement matrix and also if you are fronting in the client so how are you delivering a demos how are you taking up large chunk of projects and you know keeping up the service level agreements slas and effective coordination in terms of on-site team or subject matter expert team and off-site team the people whom you are working and now effective coordination is more and more towards you know how are you coordinating with people who are working remotely from their hometowns there'll be power cuts there'll be internet failure there'll be device failure there is nobody to who, who can service these devices and also proper documentation. So these are the things, you know, which, you know, as a project manager uh, is needed. So now I am uh, on time. So let me pick up uh, some of the questions, which is there on the chart. So if uh, Kanika, so uh, if we have any questions, uh, it will be good. Kanika, are you there? Can you hear me? Go ahead, Ankur. Uh, Anvir, hi, how are you? Good, good, Ankur. Go ahead. Uh, I have a question. I have a basic query that an instructional designer will design the course, right? For an individual always or for a group only? 
instructional designer will design the course for a group for individual i did not understood okay means uh, it's see it's basically related to the training program right hmm where the yeah. uh, where the role of the instructional designer comes into picture yes right am i right yeah go ahead go ahead i'm listening to you yes i am asking the uh, that particular program that particular modules or the uh, where all these things comes into picture right articulate storyline or storyboarding or camtasia and all these things see i have a basic idea of it right so i am asking that these programs will be designed for a group or for an individual or for or for both okay see instruction designer will develop a course for you know um, as a individual contributor instruction designer will develop yes. a storyboard okay so there are various other departments in the organization if if yes. he is you know if he is see, i mean having to, the... see, i mean i mean to ask that it uh, it is not mandatory or it is not necessary that every time we get a group right yes it to is not mandatory need, to whom we need to design yeah. a program this is my question yes 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 he can deliver he can deliver it for entire group and he can deliver it for you know one particular topic or one specific stakeholder as well okay yes that is what that is what my concern was yes so it could be so it could be both it is possible for both right yes yes it could be both. as 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 per the organization's requirement exactly yes okay okay thank you thank you sir most welcome so any other uh, and one more question i wanted uh, one more question tanvir i wanted to ask one more question i have a question sure. uh see these are the tools basically right this article yes. storyline or storyboarding right these are these are just the tools right yes with whom with the help of with the help of these tools we can design the presentation or we can prepare a presentation right yes okay so articulate storyline uh, adobe captivate uh, these are the tools which will help you to put your storyboard into a visual factor wherein it will take the shape up of e learning so there are many other tools like that wherein we combine the tools articulate storyline can be a base tool wherein we add videos from vr and we add graphics from adobe illustrator we add graphics from adobe photoshop sometimes we use free pick uh, digital images to add so yeah these are the tools uh, we will combine and create e learning but prior to this we will use word document excel all we will use you know different kind of storyboards which is already present in our organization okay. Okay. okay yeah so so generally the role of an instructional designer right would be like that uh, he will be a part of a team right where uh, they will get the requirement to design a program or training program isn't it right yes he will be part of the team sometimes he can be he will be individual contributor wherein team itself is not there sometimes okay. in the instructional designer has to perform all of the tasks which we discussed yes that what you were saying right that sometimes if uh, yeah. if there is no team then we need to outsource a, someone or to design okay yeah fine thank you tanu okay thank you. most welcome varsha go ahead yeah hi tanvir so i just had a doubt of uh, what hi. is the main difference between an e learning developer and an instructional designer a uh, very good question e learning developer is a person who picks up the storyboard from instructional designer he will try to understand that you know what should become in first slide you know how do we navigate and he will bring in most of the user experience like adding buttons building triggers and building how the course should look like how it has to go towards a completion and how as a package in terms of you know scom it has to get packaged and where it has to get deployed instructional designer is a person who creates this e learning who creates the complete uh, base of this you know e learning that is storyboard in terms of storyboard instructional under instruction designer gets into a meeting with subject matter expert understand the training need analysis do you know a target audience analysis create some storyboard prototyping 
ask the people to create some user experience user interface uh, um, uh, prototype for uh, the stakeholder he gets the approval from stakeholder he gets the approval from subject matter expert he writes the content he writes the content sometime and when he writes the content he will see the sanity of the content then he will also hand hold the e learning developer in terms of producing the content as he visualized as he has getting approval from stakeholder again instructional designer is a person who will front end the testing with the functional testing and process testing and grammar testing or like you know beta alpha and he will look forward that you know this e learning course get deployed on the lms after deploying what is the roi for uh, the instructional design course which he has for the e learning which we have developed how people are understand this how people are taking this ahead and uh, what is the business value which we have defined earlier a business objective which we defined earlier is it meeting how the people are performing so this end to end analysis should be done by instructional designer so e learning developer is just a role which starts from after completion of storyboard after giving till it gets deployed to lms oh okay fine thank you so much uh, tanvir i have a query Okay, uh, Ankur, can we go to Rishikesh and come back to you because? Ah, uh, yes, sure. Also, please, yeah. please, please, please. Thank. Yeah, Rishikesh, uh, please go ahead. Yeah. Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. So the question: What is the role of an instructional designer in the use of this tool? Okay, and are any part of this tool will be covered in the schools? Okay, so. instructional designer as a you know what is the uh, role of instructional designer in the tool is knowing the tool will enhance the productivity of his e learning and also can help on the basic understanding and basic discussion when he is having with the stakeholder that you know what kind of functionalities will work what kind of functionalities may not work what kind of browser compatibility it will work you know where all the things like zoom in zoom out are taking the media inside and executing it adding javascript so those things as a basic understanding for an instructional designer if he is having that will be great so if he is not having those thing then what happens is he might need to add a, a e learning developer to the call with subject matter expert and wherein he has to park all the questions so uh then uh, the the second part of the question is yes the tools are not covered in instructional design course but tools uh, coverage is separately uh, it's a different training wherein you know uh, we have trainer who is training on articulate so align and adopt captivate separately okay, thank you that's the answer most welcome okay. yes ankur go ahead uh yes tanvir i have a question mm -hmm. and my question is that uh, for example when we design a program right or mm -hmm. uh, when we design a training program right so after that uh how what would be the mode through which we will interact with the target audience uh i mean to i mean to ask that will we circulate any kind of survey or questionnaire or something like that or it will be one to one or there will be a separate person will who will be doing that okay uh, so as of now the earlier was like uh, when as soon as we finish i instructor led training we used to find some of the printouts wherein we have to write but now the lmss are coming up with the feature of students being completed uh, has to fill up a survey so that survey will be you know as a part of okay. completion criteria for that course so that is one option second option uh, the second uh, method is their immediate supervisor for whom we have trained so we'll ask them for a collective feedback so when we ask for a collective feedback and see that you know how people are performing how it is engaging we we'll ask different different psychometric question how is the team matrix so if somebody is you know uh, somebody is operating at a seven calls per day and how is he improving to 10 calls per day what made him realize what kind of skills he added from the training so these kind of brainstorming discussion these kind of one on one coaching one on one discussion with their supervisor which is really adding value for the entire uh, organization as a business value so that is what i am asking tanveer that who will be doing that for example instructional designer a, instructional designer instructional designer right and yes. instructional designer is uh, means is some is something is instructional design is something that it will be a team work right someone mm. will be doing 
graphics someone will be doing content development okay so who will be who will be coordinating with their superiors yeah, it's a instructional design project manager who will be having all the scope defined okay that- okay Got it. 30 days i have launched the 30 days after 30 days 5 days i will have a collective feedback their slots will be booked and there will be a you know survey trigger will be sent to the supervisor and after right. 15 days means 45 days of time we will publish the report to the stakeholder that right. this many people right. are taken so this is a orchestrated event okay complete. so it will be it will be sorted internally who will be doing the uh, the team will be doing the review and the feedback analysis all of these things right all of these things as a team we sort out but as a individual contributor instructional designer alone has to do that is the reality now because people are not looking it to hiring more and more people where it becomes cost burden so they are looking exactly. one person to handle everything okay okay and uh, my last query tarveer yeah please go ahead as i know i have a, a small understanding of camtasia tool right <laughs> so it it is a video editor tool right it is a video editor so for example i am a learner right what role i will be playing in learning it because i know it's a video editor tool how i uh, so why do you why do you want to use camtasia that what makes what what matters because i have gone through uh, something where i got to know that this is also a part of instructional design See now, it is not. See, tools are there. I, I, I say, pen and paper is also part of instructional design. <laughs> How do I use it? So, right. if I want to create micro learning, am I using my uh, Camtasia? Am I using Vyond? Am I using Adobe Premiere? Am I using Adobe After Effects? Effects people tag many things, many, many places. Okay. It is all required. depends upon you know. Yeah, it is not required. So, what you okay. need to know is clear, concise understanding of instructional design end to end. Uh, as a okay. in a person where what all the stages is involved how do you perform in various right. tasks right but tanvir uh, this one uh, storyline and storyboarding these are important right articulate storyline is a software storyboarding uh-huh. is a process where we net the story and we create a structure we'll apply a instructional design medium and storyboard can be created in terms of word document uh, in terms of excel in terms of uh, you know notepad as well got it. got it and that is a separate tool storyline story articulate storyline is a tool is a coding is a thank you in the instance. yeah thank you thank you so much thank you sir okay most welcome so we have a time constraint here uh, sarita morya you are on mute do you have any questions so that is will be the last question for the day okay okay fine so let me go over and uh, so these are the 16 hours uh, in such as an instruction design course you'll be uh, getting 16 hours live training program 12 boot camp sessions monthly and you will have membership and you will have engaging assignment you will have membership with henry harvin uh, also you will have engaging assignments and project you will have one to six months internship opportunity you know that is one thing we have so this deck will be shared with uh, all of the participants uh, who are there here also uh, the as a assurance that it will be uh, open to all kind of different fields who are coming in in a, in, a, in, a, in a different different sectors wherein the examples will be given as such and also we will be taking you through uh, different different examples of different different sectors in terms of reality you will end up in go be examples which are collected from last few days few weeks and few months only so those examples are much much relevant so you will be able to develop and design a training program and we will be helping you out you know what all the various survey tools we have in terms of survey you can do uh, it is not only a survey monkey so there are other ways of doing survey and uh, as a presentation what are the different tools we have we can give you the names of presentation tools and then from uh, so on uh, we will have uh, the uh, entire instructional design course completed after that you can join to adobe articulate adobe captivate articulate storyline or different tools where you can understand those things 
okay then the program details are this uh, this is the training fees assignment and projects and certification uh, from henry harvin but as a, a lifetime membership writing academy uh, this is the training program uh, e learning lms access for portal monthly boot camp unlimited access for multiple trainers uh, is you know 2000 but as an offer combining all these things it was you know just you know 12500 that is what you know henry harvin is coming uh, with then how do we enroll so these are the links where you, where you can you know go ahead directly and enroll so those things are already shared with you and uh, the batches are already uh, on the go we have been taking batches and we have been enrolling people and this is i think very good number of participants coming in and they are understanding and they are implementing and they are i i am happy to hear most of my students got placed in some day sometime and people will call me to ask sir how do we perform for this interview this is the job description i have got and this is my resume how do i customize my resume <laughs> so those are the things which will come so yeah so we are there to help you out and uh, this is our social media links and tags and uh, thank you so much for joining in and yep yeah, that's it for me signing off from uh, henry haven this is your coach mohammed tanveer happy to know all of you take care bye bye